See what I created with these Amico Flux Glaze combinations. Hi, Marie here from Pottery Crafters. In the last two videos, I showed you six new Flux Glazes from Amico that I brushed and poured on smooth and textured surfaces. In this video, I'm excited to show you some cool glaze combinations with these Flux Glazes and other Amico Glazes. I'll show you how I glazed them and how they turned out. The pottery in this video were made with Amico number no. 11 Amix Stoneware White Clay and Amico number no. 46 Buff Stoneware Clay. All the supplies used are listed for you in the show notes below. Before I get started, here are a few quick tips when glazing. Make sure your hands are clean and dry or wear gloves. Gloves protect your pottery if your hands get oily. Wash your bisque ware with a clean damp sponge to ensure the glaze bonds to your piece. Applying wax resist to the bottom of your bisque ware makes it easier to get any glaze off the bottom so your pottery doesn't stick to the kiln shelf. Mix your glaze as well. I use this drink mixer. It gets to the bottom of the Amico glaze jars, which is a big plus. I'll be firing all of the glaze combinations in my scut kiln to cone 5 with a 20 minute hold. Let's get started. I'll start with Amico Tangelo for the base and layered with honeydew flux on the top. I'm glazing two mixing bowls. Pour in and flip over. Check to make sure the inside is covered with glaze. Keep the bowl upside down and pour over the outside. These two mixing bowls are made with Amico number no. 46 buff clay. The rest of the pottery was made with Amico number no. 11 Amix stoneware white clay. I can still pour glaze on this good sized bowl with less than half a jar of glaze. This Tangelo is a celadon glaze. Celadon glazes are stable so I don't have to be concerned about glazes running too much. Just transfer the glaze back into the small bowl and finish pouring. This is a helpful tip if you want to pour and don't have much glaze. Let the bowls dry. After the bowls are dry, pour a layer of honeydew on the top half of the large bowl. You can dip if you have enough glaze in a big enough bowl. Or pour like this if you don't. I have to be careful not to pour the honeydew into the bowl. I just want to layer the top part of the bowl. That looks good. Now for the smaller bowl. This bowl is small enough to dip. Carefully dip the bowl into the bowl of glaze on an angle. Try to get as even as you can. I like the pattern it created around the bowl. I'll leave it. Let's see how it turned out. This Tangelo glaze and honeydew are stunning on these bowls. The bright orange adds a pop of color to the mixing bowls. I love how the honeydew interacted with the Tangelo glaze. You can see the buff clay through the orange celadon glaze. I like how the Tangelo mixed with the honeydew on the top. And then you get the light green, almost white, then green and orange before the honeydew stops. I'm very pleased with these mixing bowls. They make a nice set. Let's check out the next combination. This time I'm trying Amico Sapphire Float for the base and Cirrus Flow Flux layered on the top. Pour the Sapphire Float on the inside and flip the mug over. Then pour on the outside of the mug. Get the handle. I love making unique handles. I have an article on my Pottery Crafters website and a video on easy ways to make unique handles with the handheld clay extruder. I left the link for you below in the show notes. I put tape around the foot because I don't know how much the sapphire float will float with the cirrus flow. Let it dry, then dip the cirrus flow about two inches down. 
let the extra glaze drip off and let it dry. Let's see how it turned out. I really like how the sapphire float and the cirrus flow combination turned out. While the sapphire float did turn out darker than I expected, it provided a rich deep base for the cirrus flow to flow down. The contrast between the two glazes is striking. With the cirrus flow flowing almost twice the length over the sapphire float. The inside of the mug looks great. I love the pattern that the two glazes created together on the handle too. They flowed together beautifully. The overall effect is a nice looking mug. Let's check out the next combination. For the next combination, I'll try Amico textured turquoise as the base. Then layer with river birch flux. Pour in and flip over. I'm not going to pour the textured turquoise all the way to the base. I want to see how the glazes flow down together. Let this dry and layer with the river birch. I'm dipping the glaze in about an inch. Then pour the river birch halfway down the pot. Let this dry. And let's see how it turned out. Very interesting. I must say this combination of the textured turquoise and river birch is a good choice. The way the crystals in the river birch flow down onto the textured turquoise creates an interesting effect. I think it has a Japanese feel to it. The look could be attributed to the organic flow of the glazes which is seen in Japanese pottery. The color combination is also very appealing, with the textured turquoise providing a beautiful backdrop for the flowing crystals. And the inside is also beautiful. This combination has resulted in a beautiful, unique piece of pottery. Let's check out the next combination. For this next combination, I'll apply Amico Iron Luster as the base and layer with river birch flux. Pour the iron luster on the inside. Flip it over and pour on the outside. This is almost as fast as dipping. Almost. I put tape around the base of this bowl also. Since I've never done glaze combinations with these flux glazes, I have noticed in the last two videos I made on the flux glazes that these brown crystals do run. If you missed the last two videos, I left the links for you below in the show notes. Dip the rim about an inch and a half down. The crystals in these glazes do create a nice effect. Let's see how it turned out. Well, I'm happy I didn't glaze the foot. I do love the drips they created. This combination is truly stunning. When applied together, the brown crystals in the glaze do run nicely, creating a beautiful effect. The interaction of these two glazes produces an array of colors, ranging from brown to green, blue, and even yellow. If you like what you see, don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell icon to get notified when a new video comes out. This combination is a great choice for anyone looking to create a unique glaze for their pottery. Just gorgeous. Let's check out the next combination. The next combination I'll try is the Amico Tangelo for the base. And see how the moss mist flux looks over it. Pour the Tangelo inside the mug. Because I don't have much Tangelo left, I'm twisting the mug as I tip it upside down to cover the inside. Keep the mug upside down and pour the glaze on the outside. Once I run out of glaze, I switch the bowls and glaze the rest of the mug. This does work well when your glaze is running low. Once the glaze is dry, dip it in the moss mist. I have to dip the mug on an angle 
because of the size of the bowl and the amount of glaze I have. I want the glaze to go down the mug a little further. So I'll pour the moss mist about an inch further on the outside. Let the extra glaze drip off. Let it dry. Let's see how it turned out. I love this tangelo and moss mist combination. I love how the moss mist spots flow down the surface of the mug, creating distinct lines that are visually striking. When layered, the colors of the moss mist and tangelo blend together beautifully. The inside of this mug is also visually appealing, making it a pleasure to drink from. It's worth noting that the moss mist did stop flowing, which is useful information if you want to layer the moss mist even further down the mug. The cream and green molted effect on the tangelo is impressive, making this glaze combination a definite winner. Let's check out the next combination. For the next combination, I'll start with Honey Flux as the base and layer with Midnight Run Flux. Pour the glaze on the inside and pour the glaze on the outside. I put tape around the base because the Honey Flux and Midnight Run may run. After the Honey Flux is dry, dip the pot in the Midnight Run. I'll just tilt and roll it around in the bowl. About an inch down from the rim looks good. Let the extra glaze drip off and let it dry. Let's see how it turned out. The Honey Flux and Midnight Run really ran. The glazes ran right past the foot and fused onto my cookie. Thank goodness the glaze didn't run onto my kiln shelf. The good news is now I know how much glaze I can use with this combination. I love the color and effect the glazes created. Like a gray-blue hue cascading down the honey flux. Well, I can't sell it and it looks too cool to get rid of. It will now become one of my pottery tool holders. I'll be doing this combination again, but with less glaze. Let's check out the next combination. I'll start with Amico Flux Blossom for the base and layer with iron luster over the top half. Pour the glaze in the bowl, flip it over, and pour on the outside. I have another video with three glaze combinations for you to check out. I left the link for you below in the show notes. Let this dry and dip the rim in iron luster. I'm tilting the bowl to cover about a third of the bowl. When tilting the bowl, be careful not to hit the edges. I'll let the extra glaze drip off before I flip the bowl over and let it dry. Let's see how it turned out. The combination of the Flux Blossom and the Iron Luster is truly a work of art. The shimmery pink of the Flux Blossom color in the middle of the bowl is beautiful. I love how the colors flow down and blended together. The different shades of brown and pink with a hint of blue created a stunning visual effect. The deeper blue mixed in at the edge of the drips adds another cool dimension to the design. In this close-up of the edge of the drips, you can see the pattern that the glazes created. I'm very pleased with this combination. I will definitely be using it again. I must say, overall, I'm pleased with the results. The Tangelo and Honeydew are a beautiful combination, making this a great set of mixing bowls. The Sapphire Float provided a rich base for the Cirrus Flow to flow down, creating a striking contrast between the two glazes. The combination of the textured turquoise on the river birch creates an interesting, beautiful effect with a Japanese feel to the piece. The Iron Luster and River Birch combination created beautiful drips, an array of colors ranging from brown to green, blue, and even yellow. The Tangelo blends beautifully with the moss mist green spots flowing down the surface of the pottery, making it a definite winner. 
The combination of the honey flux and the midnight run glaze resulted in the glazes running past the foot of the pot, but I still love the color and effect that the glaze created. A little less glaze next time. And the combination of the flux blossom and the iron luster creates a cool look with beautiful colors flowing down and blending together, making this a stunning work of art. The flux glaze combinations that I tried here are just a few examples of the beautiful effects that you can achieve with these glazes. Whether used as a base or layered over other glazes, the Amical Flux glazes offer a wide range of possibilities for creating unique and stunning pottery. So if you're looking for a new glaze combination to try, these Flux glaze combinations give you some great ideas. Don't forget to hit the bell icon to get notified when the next video comes out, so you can continue to explore the wonderful world of crafting pottery. You watching helps me to create more videos like this one. Now head on over to this pouring under glaze for the marble effect with split cups video, or this how to recycle clay the less messy way video. If you do, I get to play with more clay. Let's stay dirty.